Hey folks, in this video we are going to take a look at the feedback tool. So Moodle has two tools that are both essentially feedback tools. It has the choice tool, which is really just it's a feedback tool when you only have like one specific question to ask students. The feedback tool as allows you to essentially create a survey or to create something that is several questions long. So let's take a look at how to do that. As always, you're in your course, you want to turn edit mode on, and you come down to somewhere you want to add that activity, and so you add an activity or resource. As always, you can find the uh, you can find the option here under all, or you can find it under activities. So we're going to go to feedback, and we're just going to say this is informal survey number one, number two. I'm making things up. Uh, you provide some description of what this is and what might be useful for students to know about using it. And then you come down to availability. You identify when uh, when students can start answering it and when they can no longer um, answer or, or respond to the questions. Under question settings and submissions, we've got a couple other options here. So let's talk about these. So the first is whether you record usernames. So you can have it anonymous or you can have users' names will be logged and shown with answers. Depending on what you're asking, um, you know, will dictate which one you use. I will say realistically, anonymity doesn't really exist in a learning management system. So it's yes, it is the the yes, there is some ways in which the names become harder to find, but the reality is there's no real such thing as anonymity uh, in a learning management system. So I would just, no matter what, if you are going to do anonymous, you should also let students know or provide some language around, you know, by and large, this is, uh, this is pseudo -anon anonymous and allow them to know that and understand that because I think that's important for them to understand what's what is really anonymous and what isn't in the system. All right, you can allow for multiple submissions. So depending on what you have them doing, uh, you might want them to be able to regularly do that. So if you select yes, then they can keep submitting uh, or redoing the item. Enable notifications of submissions. This is also really useful. This will let you know when a student has submitted. So one way to think about this is if you are doing something like getting feedback, you might initially have it know up until the, you know, the due date that you identify with students. You might say you might have this off um, up through, say, July 1st is when it's due. But after July 1st, you might come in here and turn it on so that if there's any later students that come in, you can at least go in and see that feedback. Auto numbering questions, I mean, this is, it might be useful for, you know, if you have five to eight questions to auto number so students know what number they're on and how much they have left. After the submission, you've got some choices. You can show the analysis page. So this would show what other people, what how all the other questions were answered. Um, and you want to think about show analysis in relation to anonymous. What I would say is if you have anonymous, yes, you're pretty, you can be pretty comfortable that a student's username is not going to be clear to the students on that submission page. Uh, however, if they include personal, depending on the questions, if they're open-ended, etc., uh, there may be personal information that does indicate who they are. So again, always think about how you communicate what will and what won't be seen. You can have a completion activity such as, hey, you know, great job or, you know, glad, thank you for taking the time for doing this. And you can also include a link to the next activity. You know, maybe depending on what you're doing, you send them to a video of like, hey, now that you did this, like, go watch, you know, kittens play. I don't know, something you might send them to do next. Common module settings, do you show it on the course um, or not? And on the course page or not, or do you want it hidden until you have it ready? And then if you're using groups, you can assign this to a particular group. Restrict access if you want to limit where and when students can access this. And of course, activity completion. Uh, I always like to have show activity when conditions are met. In this case, they must actually do it and they must view it and do it. All of that's great. Now, what we've done now is we've set up the bucket for the feedback tool. So you know, we haven't asked any questions yet. 
that's what we're going to do next. But the first thing you have to do is set up the bucket. So we've said, here's a bucket of feedback. Now let's add some questions. So when you get to the bottom here, you're going to hit save and display. And once you're in here, as you can see, you have several options, edit questions, preview questions, and answer questions. So currently you have no questions. So let's go in and edit questions. And it's going, first thing you can do is decide to add a question. Uh, you can create templates. So if there's a certain set of questions you like to use in each course, you can. You can import questions that you have from other classes. So you can play around with that. Um, in this case, we're going to add a question. And then it asks us what kind of question do we want to add? Do we want to add a CAPTCHA? Probably not. Uh, do we want to add information? So this might be just some context to help the student. It might be a paragraph uh, explaining a certain idea that the next item is going to be a question you ask them on. You can ask longer text answer or multiple choice. Um, so let's do multiple choice. All right. We can decide if it's required or not. Um, and I'm going to say, what is your favorite? Uh, favorite snack food, right? You can give it a label and labels work that if you want to start to categorize your questions so you kind of have these pools of different questions, you can do that. Multiple choice here gives you a couple different options. So multiple choice in that they can only choose one answer. Uh, multiple choice in that they can select multiple answers or multiple choice where a single answer is allowed from a drop down menu. So given what this question is, I might allow for multiple answers. And again, adjustment, you can have the answers vertical or horizontal, horizontal. And then um, do not analyze empty submits. So if this provides some analysis on the back end, and if things are not submitted, then they do not count. If you have it as no, then they won't be counted towards that analysis. So now it says multiple choice values. That is, what are the answers that you want as part of the uh, question? And it's not clear, but down here it just tells you use one line for each answer. So I might do uh, cheese and crackers. I'm gonna add. A, I'm gonna pause and add a few answers, and then uh, we'll proceed. All right, so I've thrown a couple options down here, and then I have position. So right now, I'm only going to see one. But if I had 15 questions, I might decide I want this to be question three or question five. So it allows me to do a little bit placing before, a little bit placing in the order of things. So let me hit save changes, and it comes right into this is what the question will look like. The little exclamation point is letting me know this is a required question. And now that I have this, I can also always go back and edit the question, or I can change it to not, uh, not required, or delete the question. Everything is looking great. OK, then I might go and add another question. Again, I can do short answer, numeric, uh, all sorts of different choices here. If I do have something like 15 questions, I may want to add a page break somewhere around the middle point um, or some other, you know, it, depending on how long this gets. But here's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Um, always, if I want to go back and change the settings, when I'm in here, I can go to settings and I can also go to analysis. And it's saying, are you sure you want to leave page because I clicked on fruit and I'm going to say yes. So once here, this will actually start to show as people answer some uh, some of the analysis around what their what the answers are. So it can be really helpful, really useful, um, just to kind of get a quick you know eye shot of of where the the information is trending. Then you also have responses, and in this situation, if it's anonymous, then it would tell you how many anonymous entries there are. If it's if it wasn't anonymous, it would show you who had submitted it. So if you are trying to get make sure people fill it out, you can kind of give them a little bit more nudging around that. So that is the feedback tool. It's really useful. You know, once you start to build something that you really like, you can easily use it across your different courses. Hope this has been helpful. Hope this has been helpful. Let me know if you have any questions.